Hey everybody, Joe here, and today we have a guide for you on how to add an external IPC on your main network to your NVR or hybrid DVR. In order to do this, keep in mind that you're going to have to have initialized your Elite IPC already, and we do have a guide for that that we have created for you. You can find a link to that article and video in the description at the bottom of the page. Now, you may already be familiar with pairing an IP camera to an NVR that has onboard power over Ethernet. The process is pretty plug and play. You connect the camera to an Ethernet cable and connect that Ethernet cable to your PoE. The recorder then initializes the camera for you and it pops right up on your screen. When you're pairing a camera that's connected to your external network, however, there's a bit more manual setup involved. As we mentioned earlier, you're first going to need to initialize your Elite IPC. And again, we have that guide uh, linked in the description at the bottom of the page. Once that is completed, you're still going to need your computer and your configuration tool, and we can get started pairing your brand new IPC with your recorder. Let's go ahead. Okay, as we mentioned before, you're gonna wanna have your configuration tool open. You'll see here, we have the camera and our NVR both showing up in the list. The default IP address that's given to a camera after it's been initialized is always 192.168.1.108. We need to change this IP address so it matches the scheme of our recorder and also our main network. Otherwise, they won't communicate even if you add the camera to the recorder. The first thing that we're going to need to do, however, is determine a free available IP that's on our network that is not being used by another device. In order to do this, we are going to have to open a command prompt. To get the command prompt open, simply click on your start menu and then type the letters CMD into the field. You can then click the command prompt icon or hit enter on your keyboard. Once command prompt is up, type in the command IPC ONFIG, also known as IPConfig, and hit enter. You're going to see your primary IP address displayed first and at the bottom, your default gateway. Take note of what the default gateway looks like and that it's very similar to the NVR's IP address we have in the list already because these are all in scheme. The first three digits of the IP address in the camera have to match the first three digits of the scheme of our network. In this case, it's 10.10.0. Refer to your own command prompt to find out what those are. Next, type ping and then input an IP address using the same first three octets but changing the last octet to any number between 1 and 254. This is going to tell us if that IP address is free or if it's already being used. With our 101 address, we can see that we got a response. That tells us this IP is not available. Let's try 201. Awesome, we're not getting a response. This is actually what you want. If there's no response, that means that IP address is free and we can use it to set for our camera. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to go back over to the configuration tool. The first thing we need to do is open the search setting field. This is because we need to input the username and password associated with the camera we're going to be making changes to. Go ahead and input that information and hit OK at which point the configuration tool will refresh the search and you'll see the items repopulate. Next, click the pencil next to the camera we're editing. You're going to first then at the very top field input the IP address under the static option that we had just tested. In this case, for us, it's 10.10.0.201. Your subnet mask is usually going to be three 255s and a zero, but refer to your IP config if you have to. And then lastly, your default gateway will always be the same as any other default gateway for the devices on this network. Look for the green check once you hit OK, and you can refresh the search wheel to see that the change did in fact take effect. Now that we have an IP address set on this camera, we can go ahead and get started adding it to the recorder. If you have Internet Explorer, you can go ahead and click open Internet Explorer and type in the IP address of your recorder manually. But if you have the config tool to open, all you really need to do is click the IE icon you see next to the recorder on the list in config tool. This will automatically populate that into the address bar field. Once you have your recorder pulled up, go ahead and log in using your username and your password. Once logged in, click the management icon and from there, go ahead and click the camera option. This should automatically put us in the registration, but if it doesn't, make sure to click there. You'll see the one camera we have, and you'll see our search field here. We're gonna do a device search just to show you that the NVR does in fact see the camera on the network. Now you could add it automatically here, 
But if you have a third party camera or you want to enter in a custom password, you're going to want to use the manual add option and that's what we're going to show you now. Go ahead and click manually add. From here, if you're using a proprietary camera, which means an E-Series camera and an E-Series recorder, you're going to want to leave this set to private, put in your camera's IP address, leave the port alone, put in your username, your password, and then click OK. If you're using a third-party camera, you're going to want to change the protocol from manufacturer to OnViv. You're going to want to use the IP address you set, and you'll have to look up the HTTP port of your third-party camera either through the UI or from the manufacturer. Put in its username and password and click OK. Since our camera is proprietary, we're switching back to private and we're going to fill out that information now. Awesome. Once we click OK, you'll see it add to the registry. It may be red. That's fine and normal. Go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see a nice green dot. Let's take a look at our live view now and see that camera working and connected. It's a little fuzzy because we left the plastic wrapper on this one since it's a brand new camera. We just wanted to show you getting it connected. But here we are, connected, working, and good to go. Thanks for joining us today as we showed you how to add a remote IPC on your external network to your NVR or hybrid DVR. For any information on any of the products we carry or sell or technical support, give our pros a call at 561-288-5258. And until next time, stay safe.